Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be moving my virtual machine off of Proxmox and starting to work on something new. Let's find out what that is. I made a video, I think this has been a couple of years ago now. It was on Vert Manager, which is a, a Linux uh, virtual machine that was developed by Red Hat. But Red Hat has since deprecated that package. It's still, it's still being included with a number of distros. Red Hat said that they wanted to concentrate on cockpit as where they wanted to go in order to build up their virtual machine uh, capabilities. And they're not abandoning Vert Manager completely. They're still using the, the Live Vert and also the Vert Viewer pieces out of it. So none of that's going away. But the old-fashioned interface that Vert Manager gave us, well, yeah, it's outmoded and they... They knew that, so they wanted to get rid of it. So you've seen this before. I've, I've shown it to you. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. I'm just going to talk about this part. This is optional. So it won't appear on your, your cockpit screen until you install the package cockpit-machines. That does a number of things. First of all, it builds up, uh, if you don't already have all of the KVM and QEMU packages, it brings those in along with LiveVert. LiveVert is exactly the same management library that sits under Vert Manager. So basically what Red Hat did was they took the old user interface and tossed it out the window. And there, this is the new one. And it's divided up into uh, three sections. First, we have our storage pools, which allows us to define where we want to store things, whether it be images, ISO images that we want to build uh, VMs from, or whether we, it's snapshots that we want to keep from the VMs that we're running, or maybe it's just the pool of uh, storage that we have here. And then we can create as many of those as we would like. There's a number of ways to do it. I'm, I'm not going to show you everything, but you can have these either system-wide, so any other user using cockpit virtual machines has access to these, or you can make it specific to this user session, which would effectively make it private from other and protected from other users. You can assign a name to the pool. You can use a file system directory. You can have it go to an NFS server. You can use an iSCSI target. You can use an entire physical drive or you can use an LVM volume group if you wish to create them. Those pools are not the same as the storage areas that you would set up for your system. Those storage pools are specifically for the virtual machines. And this is the same. This is not the same as setting up networking for the host box. This is setting up networking for your virtual machines. So again, in here you can have as many of these as you like. Uh, you can you can define a name. You can uh, tell it it's a it is a NAT or it's an open network, which means it's basically bridged. Uh, and then you can have none. It's totally isolated. So again, this would be a private network that would keep communication traffic within this particular segment of your network. You can also define them as uh, which device you want to you want to assign it to. So if you have multiple network cards in your machine, you can assign this network to a specific one, or you can let it pick which one uh, to use. You can you can make it IPv4 only, IPv6 only, or both. Your choice. And then you can set your network mask and so forth. This page is for your virtual machines, and you'll see that I have uh, three of them that are already created. In order to create them, you can either import a VM, and with QEMU, that's as simple as uh, importing a QCAL uh, file. So maybe you have Proxmox and you want to bring over. Proxmox, by the way, is QEMU-based. So you can bring over the QCALs that you created with Proxmox and then you know f structure the definition of that virtual machine around it, and this allows you to do that. So you give it a name. Again, these can these connections can be system wide or 
specific to the user session. You can define an operating system that goes here. Uh, what is it? Is it Alpine? Is it Alma? Is it Alt? Is it Arch? You got a lot more flexibility here uh, than you do in some of the others. And yes, you can use Microsoft Windows uh, if you wish. I noticed that it goes, yeah, there's 11 right there. So yeah, if you want to set up a Windows server, you can. Uh, and then how much memory you want to dedicate. You can either import and run or import and edit. So it'll create the, it'll create the definition for the virtual machine and then you can change it before you actually, if there's something that you need to change. Okay, so I have three virtual machines that I have created. Let's go ahead and create a, a fourth one here. I'm going to download the OS and all I need to do is to pick it. So I'll choose Alma for this. Create a new volume. We'll give it, uh, well, 32 gig, 4 gig of memory. And we'll go ahead and create it and run for this to get done. Or maybe I'll just come back. I didn't take very long. It's running. So let's go check it on it. Now at this point, it's going to stop and wait. Uh, and the reason it's waiting here is because this is a network boot. And so it's downloading the OS to get ready to install. You'll notice that there's a console here. This is one of the things I like about this over Proxmox. Proxmox, when you set, when you set up your console, you have to do, assign it to a device. Whereas, and, and it's taken off now. So whereas this one, you can assign it to a serial console, a VNC console, or a desktop viewer. Now that desktop viewer can either be a remote VNC or Spice. Uh, and and uh, let's let's go ahead and and we'll we'll bring it over to Spice. So all I need you can see right here that everything is set up correctly. My Spice address is defined. Now this one only works on the local host, so which is fine if I'm using this tool. But if I want to come remote with it, I won't be able to use VNC. So I got my, my Spice file, and there we are. And we'll blow this up, and then we'll start to go through the installation. And then we'll just start the installation. This I'll be back. This will take a bit. So while we're waiting for that, let's go back to one of the other ones that I have here and look at some of the other things that you can do with this. Well, of course, you can change or modify any of these add memory, add virtual CPUs, and even have it auto start with the system when the host boots. So if you have, you know, if you have VMs that you need to have come up right away, you can do that. The only thing is that like Proxmox, none of these changes like memory and virtual CPUs will take effect until you restart the uh, virtual machine. If it's running, it's not, as you can see, it's down. But what else can we do? Well, I could add an additional disk. I can add a network interface. I can add host devices. Those would be devices from the host machine that I, I want to pass through. And I can create a snapshot. So let's, let's do that. And we'll give it a description. This is a first First snapshot. That's it. And then I can create as many of those as I want. I can then, I can then delete the ones I don't, or I can revert. I can revert this whole thing, this VM, back to what the snapshot had in it. So, let's say that three or four days from now, something catastrophic gets installed. Well, I can revert back pretty easily. Now, one thing you can do is you can also clone. So I can clone this, and yeah, we'll just leave that, and I'll just go ahead and clone it. And it'll allocate space, and it's done. So if I go back out here, I should see there's my clone, and I can run it just like I do the other one. Now the snapshots don't carry with it, so that would be kind of dumb, wouldn't it? So yeah, you would, you would need to... Uh, you would need to create your snapshots going forward. So these are broken. These links are broken. They're, this clone ha has no further uh, connection back to the main. So if I were to delete Rocky, 
let's go ahead and delete this one. So it's saying, are you sure you want to do that? Yeah, I do. And it's gone. But you'll notice this one should still run. Should be in the operative word. Yeah, it should. It's a demo. So it should blow up. No, it didn't. So yeah, everything's fine. The only thing that, just like every any other clone, is you'll need to make sure that you go and destroy your old SSH keys, your host keys that got built on the original one. Otherwise, you're going to have a machine floating around with the same SSH. If you also, if you have defined a static IP address in the virtual machine that you're cloning from, yeah, you're going to probably need to go change those as well. Otherwise, you would have duplicate IPs in your in your uh, in your network. Let's go check on the other one and see how it's doing. It's done. So let's go ahead and reboot it. <laughs> it did. No problem. Okay. So it's not using a lot. 432 meg of memory. <laughs> not using a lot by today's standards anyway. So that's all. That's all I had for today. What, what I want to do next is there's also a way to manage containers. And Cockpit manages Podman containers, as you would imagine. That's the direction Red Hat, Fedora, Silverblue, Kenalite. That's where they're all going as they're moving away from Docker and using Podman. So there are management screens in here for Podman. So the next time I do one of these, I don't know when that'll be, uh, we'll look at how to set up Podman to, to manage your containers. I want to take the time to thank my Patreon members and also members of this channel. Without you, a lot of the things I do are just not possible. And I wanted to thank you very much for your support. Also, for those of you who watched the video this far, thank you so much for watching. And I hope to see you all again soon in the next video. Bye for now. <music>